Number 22. The inert gases write down in God's books of light all that John and Bill and Sue have ever been. Likewise, what the ant, the elephant, the tiger, violet, and bee have ever been or have ever done since their beginnings and give them back to them after every rest period which divides their cycles. 23. God's sole occupation is the building of moving body forms to simulate his one ideal of cause and effect, which creation is. All cause lies within the unconditioned, balanced, magnetic light of mind knowing. All effect lies within the two unbalanced, polarized lights of electric thinking, which create the two unbalanced and opposed conditions which creation is. 24. Electric thinking divides all effect into opposite pairs equally. Each one of each pair of effects is equal. Their balance is absolute. The balance of the universe cannot be upset by even one millionth of, a, of an electron's weight. The answer to this secret lies in further solving the mystery which surrounds polarity. Polarity has never been understood. It must now be understood. 25. Question. How can there be motion in a balanced universe? Answer. If two children of equal weight sit at opposite ends of a seesaw, or two equal weights are put on scales, there is no unbalance, but likewise there is no motion. Unless there can be unbalance, there can be no motion. Question. How can there be unbalance in an equally divided and equally balanced universe? Answer. Two children of equal weight play in seesaw, do not interchange with each other while they are at rest. When they desire to move, they throw themselves out of balance with their fulcrum by their equal leanings, but they are in balance with each other. Motion is then imperative. When thus thrown out of balance, they must reverse their leanings to restore balance and lose it again, as all things in nature do. Nature has a different way of playing seesaw. Instead of oscillating upon a continually extended lever, the wave extensions of polarity withdraw into their fulcrums and re-extend by turning inside out and outside in. The constitution of matter cannot be known until this principle of reversals is comprehended. Nature plays seesaw with matter in space as opposite mates. It is as though an ant and an elephant played the game. When they interchange, the ant swells to the elephant's volume and the elephant shrinks to the volume of the ant. Both are of equal potential, however, for the solidity of one balances the tenuity of the other. The cause of continued motion and sequential reversals lies in the two opposed conditions of matter. The compressed center heats and heat expands, while tenuous space cools and cold contracts. The necessary reversals of nature's wave lever, because of difference in volume between the ant and the elephant, produce the same effect by throwing the players out of balance with their fulcrum. The unknown and unsuspected mystery of magnetic poles. 26. There are four magnetic poles in every wave field, not two as heretofore believed. A three-dimensional cube-bounded sphere-centered radial universe would be impossible with but two magnetic poles. The two unsuspected magnetic poles are not unknown, however. They are the two foci so casually referred to in Kepler's law of elliptical orbits, and they are in a plane of 90 degrees from the plane of the positive and negative north and south poles. The two as yet ignored magnetic poles have already been referred to as east and west magnetic poles. 
The office of these east and west positive and negative poles is to control the balance of prolating and oblating spheres and their orbits as they, con as they contract into spheres and expand into rings equatorially in opposition to the north and south poles, which control the balance of extension and contraction in the direction of rotating poles. 27. Nature is engaged solely in the manufacture of spheres and of solid matter, surrounded by cube wave fields of tenuous space. Spheres are created by extending the flat disk, which are the inert gases, into rings and spheroids, which gradually become spheres. The opposition of the north and south magnetic poles is accountable for that. They thrust away from each other as hard as they can to fulfill the generative half of the electric cycle. The generative half is the polarizing half. It is the vitalizing half, comparable to the maturing years of man's life from babyhood to 40 years. The north and south poles thrust not only against each other's resistance, but against the opposite thrust of the east and west poles which finally conquer the generative power of gravity and oblate spheres into spheroids, then thrust spheroids into rings and disk until the depolarization process is complete. The depolarizing depolariz radiative half of the cycle might be likened to the aging latter half of man's life. The forces of thrusting are electric. The division into opposite conditions is electric. Magnetic poles control and balance the two electric dividers of the universal equilibrium. But the work of extension from the fulcrum of stillness is entirely electric. Electricity is the engine which supplies the motivating force to the universal ship. But polarity supplies the rudder and the balance which every moving body must have. Electricity is the physical expression which creation is, but the magnetic light of the universe is the source of that expression, which acts under the spiritual direction and control of magnetic poles of light. Poles appear only when motion begins its division in, of one into two, and disappear when the two cease to be two in their unity as one. 28. Nature generates matter from rings into spheres by the way of north-south poles and radiates spheres back into rings by the way of their equatorial east-west poles. In this manner, matter emerges from space to form moving bodies and is swallowed up by space to disappear into the stillness of their zero source. Reciprocative Workings of Opposing Poles North-South Poles balance and control the prolating of spheres which nature needs for the forming of bodies and their division into pairs. They extend in opposite directions at angles of 90 degrees from wave axis to to form poles of rotation for spherical body forms. They are the shafts of waves and of all spheres which spin upon shafts. East-West poles balance and control the oblating of spheres, which nature no longer needs for its body forms. They extend on wave axis to equators of forming spheres. They are the rims of wheels which spin upon the north-south shafts. North-south poles control the division of equilibrium into two opposite conditions, which occupy opposite sides of mutual equators. East-west poles exercise their control from equators of forming spheres and balance the movement of all orbits and all Aphelia and paraphilia of orbits 
as matter appears from its fulcrum and disappears into it. East-West Poles mark upon Spears equators the seeming oscillations of the north-south piston strokes as the compression of gravity and the expansion of radiation cross and recross equators to perform the work of unfolding and refolding body forms of mind ideal. North-South Poles control centrifugal windings of spears which form where the apices of two cones meet, and East-West Poles control centrifugal unwindings of spears and spear systems into cone bases at wave axis. North-South Poles divide the one condition into two against the resistance of East-West Polarity while east-west poles unite the two conditions into one against the resistance of south polarity and keep balance between opposite hemispheres and hemispheroids. North-south polarity, for example, controls the electric division of the one balance condition of sodium chloride into two unbalanced conditions. Sodium chloride is the fulcrum Sodium and chloride are opposite ends of a lever which is extended from the fulcrum like two children on opposite ends of a seesaw. East-West polarity controls the electric withdrawal of the two extensions into their fulcrum, thus uniting the two extended equators with their fulcrum at wave amplitude. Instead of three quarters for the two extensions, there is now but one equator for the united pair. North-South poles give one of the three dimensions which this dimensionless equilibrium needs for the projection of its illusions, while East-West poles give the other two. The one dimension of North-South polarity is length for poles of rotation have no other dimension as they are but one radius of a square. The other two dimensions are width and breadth, for equators of spheres are circles, and circles have infinite radii. North-south poles extend away from each other at an, at an angle of 90 degrees from their equators to divide the universal one condition into two opposed conditions. East-West poles remain upon the planes of their equators to unite the two divided conditions into one balanced condition. North-South directions lead away from each other out into infinity. They are opposites, and opposites oppose until depolarization voids all polarity. The illusion of three dimensions and how they appear. 29. The electric action-reaction of universal thinking might be likened unto an outward-inward explosion. This mind universe is engaged in thought expression everywhere, from every point in the universe little and big outward-inward polarizing-depolarizing explosions are continuous, continuously taking place. The outward actions manifest the giving half of the cycle of the love principle, which motivates this universe. The inward reactions manifest the re-giving half of the cycle. Nature never takes, it but gives for re-giving.